Hi, YouTube. Drama when the scapegoat leaves. When you're the scapegoat of your family, they don't want to lose control. The scapegoat isn't allowed to leave the family circle. After all, if you are to blame for all the family's problems, who are they going to blame when you leave? What should be a joyous event, like a single mother being able to purchase her own home, is met with criticism and drama. In my case, it's been a very long and difficult two weeks with a lot of unnecessary drama from my family and toxic in-laws, and several events that have solidified in my mind that I am definitely the family scapegoat, and I'm being punished for trying to leave the sphere of influence and control. The drama led up to all of my belongings being thrown into a pile by my toxic sister-in-law's family, unplugging my security cameras and tampering with them, to my mother allowing all this to happen and even fixing them dinner and giving me the silent treatment. More on this to come later in the video. So I need to backtrack and start from the beginning. Two weeks ago, I closed on my brand new home. For the past eight, almost nine years, I've lived in my grandmother's farmhouse. When I got divorced, the children and I had nowhere to go and were essentially homeless. My husband and I were in the process of selling our home and buying a brand new home. A few days before we were set to close on our brand new home, my narcissistic husband staged a suicide attempt with a loaded shotgun. I would later learn he staged the attempt to make me look like the villain, but in reality he just wanted to get a divorce and be with his work wife. Our home had been sold and I couldn't get out of the sale and I had no money. I made $17,000 a year, and he made almost $90,000. I had no credit cards and no credit history because he had kept things in his name. So the kids and I had no options except to move into the farmhouse next to my parents' home. My brother never left home, so he lived upstairs in their home and would eventually marry a toxic borderline and move her into, the, into my parents' home as well. I went back to school and became a nurse and slowly built my credit and savings. I even took a travel nurse job last year to save money for a house fund. I had started to feel stuck in the house and that I would never move away. I felt obligated to live next to my parents in order to take care of them as they got older. When you've been abused or the product of childhood emotional neglect, and especially the scapegoat of your family, you grow up thinking you don't deserve better. You're always settling for things because you know that nothing better is going to come along especially for you. Some of the self-talk we do to ourselves includes, nothing ever works out for me, or no one could ever love me, or things never go my way, or I don't deserve to make more money. It's always something you're telling yourself, and my low, low self-esteem led to me falling for the narcissist and marrying into a narcissistic relationship because I didn't think anything better would come along or this was my one chance at getting married and having a family because nothing better would come along. Things just don't work out for me. It's that type of negative talk that caused me and the kids to live in an older home with no insulation in the walls and ants in the kitchen and that we couldn't get rid of. Holes in the walls and floors and even a ghost. Yes, an honest-to-goodness ghost that at least three other people than myself have seen. Since we've moved, my sinuses are clearer. I'm sleeping better and just generally feel better and have more energy. I started to think that the house had mold in it. I'm posting some pictures in the background of this video to show some of the things wrong with the old house. I was always fixing something in the house. I lived rent free, but it wasn't actually free. I mean, everything comes with a price. I paid the taxes on the house and the land every year. I paid for a new roof when the old one was leaking. I installed a new water heater because the old one burst and flooded the laundry room. I replaced the dishwasher for the same reason. It was flooding the kitchen and causing the floor to start bowing. Even the pipes burst in my son's bathroom over the summer. The driveway was nothing but mud, so I paid $2,500 to have rocks brought in to make a gravel driveway. There was always something that had to be fixed on the house. I started to think that there was mold in the house because the walls in the living room slash office were peeling paint, and there was always a musty smell, especially when it rained. I would get into a coughing fit, and my mother would nag me about needing to go to the doctor. I would remind her, no, it's just this house always smells musty when it rains and makes me cough. I bought a huge HEPA filter and would run it constantly to try to clean the air. I'm not sure, but I think the paint on those walls is a mixture of lead paint and latex painted over it. 
My mother even suggested that instead of having the lead paint removed, we should just glue the sections back onto the wall that were falling off of it. I kid you not. She would rather glue huge patches of paint back to the wall than pay for lead abatement. There were wood floors under the carpet, but there, there were holes in the boards because in the winter you could feel the cold air coming up from the crawl space through the carpet if you were barefoot. There was no insulation in the walls, so in the winter the house got really cold, especially if the wind was blowing. Since moving into a new home, I've had to turn the heat down to 66 degrees because it gets so hot in this house with, with actual insulation. <laughs> I'm not used to being comfortable in the winter time. I'm also deathly afraid of spiders, and the house had an infestation of wolf spiders when we moved in. I mean, these gigantic creepy crawlies. My mother would chastise me about being so afraid of them, even though she is deathly afraid of snakes. There was a four foot long black snake that lived in a tree in my yard, and she was always looking for it. There was one summer he was sitting on my porch right outside my door waiting for me to open it so he could come inside to the air conditioning. I nearly had a heart attack when I saw his head right at my foot. However, I would much rather deal with Mr. Slinky the snake than the spiders. I hired a pest company um, to come over and spray each month for spiders and the ants that were constantly invading the kitchen. I couldn't leave a plate in the sink for an hour because if I did, I would have an army of ants all in the sink. We even had a family of skunks make their home underneath the ho house one summer and they were living under my son's bathroom. And baby skunks don't have the control over their stink glands like adults, so they just spray whenever they feel like it. My son's bathroom smelled horrible. I had to pay for the pest company to come and remove them at $125 a piece. I remember the exterminator saying, I don't want to have a confrontation with them. We're just going to leave them alone. I said, I'm paying you to have a confrontation with them. I don't want to leave them alone. I want them gone. All these things and then add on a ghost. Not long after I moved into the house, I was awake at about 2 a.m. one night and I walked into the living room and flipped on the lights and an old woman who looked like my great grandmother was standing in the doorway looking mad at me and then she disappeared. Later, my daughter would say she would see a woman walking around the yard at night and my daughter's best friend and the girl who lived across the street would occasionally see a shadow person standing in the road outside our house. So being the family scapegoat, I put up with all of this from ants to mold to dead relatives from beyond the mortal plane because I really didn't think I deserved better. Despite all this negative talk and believing that I needed to settle for second best in life, I managed to overcome this and actually buy a house. Now, in a normal family, when someone achieves something wonderful like buying their first home, you would expect the parents to be happy about this. You would expect to be congratulated and even have them offer to help you move. Well, not when you're the family scapegoat. I started the home search after my toxic sister-in-law sent me a 2012 word text mes message outlining how I'm a horrible mother and a horrible nurse, and she even challenged me to a physical fist fight. I decided she was toxic and I didn't want to live next to her and I didn't want my children around her. As soon as I started the house search, my mother started coming up with reasons for me not to move. She tried to say that Christina, my sister-in-law, felt so bad about the text message she sent me. I told my mother I didn't believe that for one minute. I told her that I thought she probably got carpal tunnel syndrome in her thumbs from typing that message. My mother went so far as to threaten me by saying, you aren't going to be able to make it on your own with these kids. You need my help. Who's going to drive these kids around? She even said, I don't know what we're going to do with this house after you leave. I guess we'll just board it up and it'll, be, it'll stay empty. I insisted that my brother and sister-in-law could move in and move out of her house. This was met with her saying, oh no, this house isn't fancy enough for Christina. She started saying things to my son like, when you move away, grandma isn't going to be around. Now, my kids are actually 15 and almost 18. They're teenagers and they're capable of taking care of themselves. She kept asking me every day if I had signed a contract yet and that it wasn't too late to back out. She really did not want me to move and I think she was seeing herself lose control. As long as I lived next door and in the house she owned, she had some level of control over me. 
My mother even said, I'm not going to help you move. I told her that I had hired movers, to which she said, well, hold on to your wallet. She always thinks people are out to get you, and there are no honest businesses out there. So, moving day came, and in true fashion, the scapegoat gets blamed for everything that goes wrong. My kids saw firsthand the past two weeks how my parents treat me, and my daughter even hugged me, and she's not a hugger. It rained really hard on moving day, and I mean cats and dogs raining. And you know that driveway that I mentioned earlier in the video? The one that, that was mud that I had uh, rocks put down? Well, the driveway was not large enough for the moving van to turn around. The moving van backed up into the yard and got stuck in the mud. They couldn't even, they couldn't get out and kept spinning and spinning their wheels. The, the wheels sunk down about four inches into the mud. Of course, this was my fault. And my dad came running across the yard mad at the movers and he started yelling at them and pointing his fingers saying, get that damn truck off my yard. This is my land and you're tearing it up. Get that truck out of here. The movers yelled back at my dad, and I called my mom telling her, you need to come out here and stop my dad from fighting with the movers. They have all of my furniture that I have accumulated over my life on that truck. You know, I don't want them doing something to the furniture in retaliation. The poor movers took out empty cardboard boxes and put them under the tires to try and get traction, but nothing helped. The company finally had to call a large tow truck, the kind that tows 18-wheelers, and they got them out of the mud. Of course, my toxic sister-in-law came out to the house and stood in the yard laughing, mostly cackling like a witch, and filming the whole thing on her cell phone. She was so excited and having the time of her life. She would later send me a text message telling me how sorry she was that my day didn't go as I had planned, and then put a smirking emoji at the end of it. Yeah. She just had to rub my nose in it. She... See, it serves me right as the scapegoat for wanting to leave the family fold. I should have known better. You know, it's, well, you get what you get. That's what she would, she would say. Anyways, not two minutes after the tow truck pulled them out, they got stuck again at the end of the driveway because the back tires of the truck fell into the ditch. The tow truck had to pull them out again. As soon as they were free and were able to drive off, my father... A 76-year-old man who should know how to act and should be a grown-up by now picked up a handful of mud and threw it at the back of the truck as they drove off. I went back into the house and I said to my daughter, I know I grew, grew up in the country, but I never thought my family was redneck or hillbillies until that moment, seeing my father jump up and down and throw mud at the moving van like a four-year-old. Now, of course, this was all my fault. And I have my parents telling me that I'd better get the moving company to fix the yard. If that wasn't bad enough, what happened next was worse. We moved into the house the next day, but I still had most of my artwork and other personal belongings at the old house. The movers had not packed up everything, and I had several carloads of stuff that I needed to move. However, I had to go back to work the next three days. The cameras for my security system were still in the house, and I got a notification on my phone. I looked at the security cameras, and they had picked up my brother and sister-in-law going into the house, even though I still had my belongings there. I told my mother, please give me a week to get the rest of my artwork and belongings out of the house. If you follow me on this channel for any length of time, you know I'm an artist, and I have a, a buttload of paintings. And my mother said that my brother and sister-in-law were planning to move into the house, and they had a lot of work to do to make it safe for them to move in with their foster baby. I told her that it was an invasion of privacy and to not have them go into the house until I had a chance to get all of my things. Being the scapegoat, your wishes are not going to be honored and your feelings are not valid. The next two nights, they did the same thing. They went into the house moving stuff around and taking measurements. I even have a video of my sister-in-law where she comes into the house, she sees the, the security camera, walks right over to it and turns it off. And that's the last footage I got from my security camera. I told my mother again that I did not want them coming into the house with my things there. I went over to the house on, on my day off and started moving artwork. My mother and I got into an argument where she told me that I was making a big deal out of nothing and that I should be grateful that I had a house to live in rent-free for the past eight years. This argument ended with her pretending to cry and then hanging up the phone. 
I went to bed feeling guilty like I was the worst daughter in the world. She had told me that she would give me a few days to move everything. I was sleeping through the day in order to work the night shift in the ER when I got a call from my daughter. She had taken her friends and went back to the house to move more of our stuff when she found over a dozen people in the home moving our belongings and throwing them into a pile in the room that used to be my office. And strangers were touching our stuff. I mean, my birth control pills, the extras were still there. I mean, my medicine cabinet, there was just tons of things that were still there, personal things. My sister-in-law had invited her entire family to come and pressure wash the house, clean the carpets, paint, and change the locks. Thank God I had moved my artwork. Complete strangers were going through our stuff and throwing it into a pile like it was junk. I felt so violated and it, like it was a complete invasion of privacy. My mother was there helping them. She would later claim that she was just watching them, but she cooked them dinner and they all sat down at the table at her house like they were her family. My daughter said, Grandma has made her choice and it isn't us. Now, my daughter can be devious at times, and she was upset that her things had been messed with. She got the new key from my mother under the guise that she and her friends were going to, to get some more things out of the house. Instead, they went to the dollar store and bought a couple gallons of glitter, went back to the house, and spread the glitter all over the cleaned carpets and pushed it down and stomped it down with their feet into the carpet. She then took a huge gay pride flag sticker and stuck it on the back of the closet door in the room where Christina wants to make her office. My daughter is gay and knows that her Aunt Christina has a problem with her being gay. When my daughter told me what her and her friend had done, I told her, I can't condone you spreading glitter around someone's house, but have I told you how much I love you? She said, Mom, we've got your back, me and my friends. So my mother and I got into another argument when I told her that my feelings don't matter. My feelings have never mattered, being the family scapegoat. I told her she lied to me when she said that she would give me a few days to move out. I said, you knew that whole plague of locusts was coming to the house, and you just didn't bother to tell me. She got defensive and said I was making a big deal out of nothing, and that my brother and Christina had a lot of work to do to make the house safe. I then reminded her that the house is probably full of mold and lead paint, but somehow, when the scapegoat was living there, it was safe for me and my children. I read the 2012 word text message to her again to remind her why her daughter chose to move. She accused me of being bitter and saying, are you gonna take this to your grave? You need to get over it. I told her I'm always supposed to be the one to suck it up and deal with it. I told her that if someone had sent a message like that to one of my children, that I would have defended my children, and certainly that person would not be allowed to live in my house. She would never admit that Christina sending me that nasty text message was wrong. She continued to defend my toxic sister-in-law and made me out to be the bad guy, the bitter daughter that would rather buy a house in one of the worst housing markets in history than live next to her toxic sister-in-law. I finally told my mother, what hurts is that you love my brother more than me. This led to my mother giving me the silent treatment. I haven't spoken with my mother in over a week now. The locks have been changed on the house and whatever was left, I'm cutting my losses. It's not worth my peace or my sanity to go back to that house to get anything else. Peace in your life can come with a price and that price was $60,000 for a down payment and the silent treatment from my parents and learning I'm the scapegoat. My body has started to heal from after being in this house for two weeks without mold. My sinuses are clear. I don't feel defeated and helpless or stuck in a spider infested house where the walls are peeling. The kids and I had our first meal with we cooked and were able to actually cook at the same time in the kitchen without tripping the breaker. I have a shower that doesn't leak and neighbors that are friendly. My body is slowly healing, but emotionally, it's going to take time to heal from being the scapegoat. I may post some of the videos from the move later on and the video my daughter took of the house when she went back with her friend and they had their glitter fest. Well, that's all for now. Just remember, being the scapegoat doesn't mean you have to settle for less. Have some self-respect and know that you deserve better. Take care.